Crispy, you can now see what I aspire to have my pops look like, but I don't have the space for that. Yeah. Like, you can you can now understand. No, I, I saw some of um, Layla's TikToks. So I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> Troy, you got nothing, bro. You got yeah, nothing. I wish I had the space for those shelves. My room ain't big enough. It just isn't. I have one cupboard that I would open, but it's blocked by stuff right now because I just don't have the space in my room. I bought a Mandalorian helmet. Hang on. Yay, I, I don't I even have know where it's too. going yet. It's it's just here. It's just here. There we wow. go. <laughs> nice. I'll, I'll I'll leave it in the background. There we go. We can, nice. we can both talk about Pedro that way, and he can be watching oh. us while we do. And yeah. We make zero daddy comments. None. Zero. I don't want to hear the word. Exactly. Hello and welcome back to Who's There, a Last of Us podcast, the show where two YouTubers and this time a special guest, we'll get there in a second, are talking about HBO's The Last of Us in our fifth special episode. But yeah, uh, Crispy, who's, who have we got as a special guest today? We've got a, a series first for special episodes, have we not? We have a non hootuber a non-Who community special guest. It's huge. I know. Someone who's watched extensive amounts of Doctor Who, as we just discussed. Yes, you know? exactly. Yes. De- definitely, definitely seen lots of it. <laughs> mm. who's, yeah. who's your favourite Doctor, Layla, by the way? David Tennant. Very safe. Very safe. Very, very safe. Perfectly. Very very safe. Perfectly. <laughs> yeah. We're going to teach you all, all the safe Doctor Who responses. When you okay. encounter a Doctor Who fan, we'll, we'll give you like a list of things to say to make sure that you don't, you don't get ambushed. You'll be fine. Perfect. Okay. Exactly, exactly. Um, but yeah, so we have got a special guest with us, ladies and gentlemen, to talk about the he- the Last of Us series, which just finished today oh, yeah. at the time of recording this. So we're, we're hot, we're finger on the pulse, we're half the press. Uh, but we have writer for Agents of Fandom, fellow podcaster, Funko collector, got to include that just purely from respect, and lover <laughs> of Pedro Pascal. It's Layla, also known as Falcon's Nat. How you doing? I'm so excited to talk about The Last of Us, my favorite show Woo-hoo! ever. Thank you yeah, guys for you having me. Both, you it's both. so good, and I just want oh, to Oh no, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a good one. Yeah, I just, we literally been planning this since the show started. I was like, make literally. sure that we we're up to date and we watch it like so we can get this get done because it yeah. it's just. Oh, there's so much I want to talk about, but poor Crispy here, he's up, it's half, it's quarter to six in the morning for him, he's got to go to work soon. I've got a, so this is going to be, a uh, for once we can't go off topic, I know. we have to stay focused the whole we've way through. We've never done it, so we've never done it. We've never done it, we've never this managed that before, but we're going to, <laughs> we're, we're, we're under time pressure. It's crazy. So. Oh well, we'll get it done. Alright, so... Where do we even begin with this? Because what we want to do is try and look at the whole series, right? Despite me just wanting to honestly spend 45 minutes talking about the last episode, I feel like I mm. could do that easily. But where do we start? Layla, what were your thoughts on the series? There you go. There's that's a really a good, simple a question good. to answer. <laughs> hang on, hang on. I have, I have a question before we get going with that. Have you played? Oh. Did you play the game, Layla, before watching the show? I did. Oh, I played, yes, we should set some context there. Yeah. I played both games. I played oh. the first game. Before I even knew who Pedro was, before I got into that. There it is. And then even like the years later after I'd played it and Pedro got cast as Joel, I was like, this is is for me. These are my worlds colliding right now. Like, yeah, the (laughs) games are incredible. I love them so much. Like, Very good. Very good. Yeah. Mm. Crispy, what about you? I I've I haven't I I think I told Troy ages ago I think I watched PewDiePie play like the first scene back in whatever <laughs> year it was 2013 2012 I can't remember how long ago it was um and so that was the only reference I had so I, I and I really enjoyed going in blind to this as well and having you know friends like yourself Troy that knew of the game and knew of the the horrors to come. Um, but I enjoyed going in completely blind that way. So, I don't know. Uh, that could make for an interesting deci- uh, discussion tonight. So, I'm excited. Well, my memory's terrible. Because Layla asked me this earlier and I was like, oh, you've seen both of the games. I thought you'd seen playthroughs of both of them in full. My my memory just isn't functioning, clearly. Well, there you go. Well, that makes him the perfect surrogate for the, qu- the point I'm going to make, which is, if you haven't played the second game, don't worry. We're not going to spoil it. Don't. Okay. Although I will just say that I find golf to be a boring sport. Anyway, so we won't spoil anything going forward beyond the first game slash season. Layla gets it. That's good. That's good. <laughs> like, um, no, please, you won't get no. that at all, will you, Oscar? I just realised you no won't clue. get that. No, no clue. <laughs> you don't oh, this know. is so good. Just... This is great. I love. I love it. 
<laughs> you don't want to know. You don't. You don't. You'll know soon enough. Well, in like two years, but it's fine. Um, but yeah, so if you don't know what comes next in the second game, we aren't going to spoil it, so don't worry about that. Obviously, we'll talk about everything from the first season and maybe some game comparisons, but yeah. So back to the original question. What did we all think of the show? Layla, do you want to go first? Yes, I would love to. I was very apprehensive going into it. I was like, this is such a good story. Like, obviously, the visuals are incredible. The plot, oh, amazing. But I didn't know how accurate of an adaptation it could be with all of the kind of CGI that would be involved and the practical effects. I was like, there is no way they are going to pull this off. But oh, my God, they did. Like, it is perfect. I have, like, zero criticism. Okay, like, minor criticism, but nothing that is, like, (laughs) life-changingly, like, horrible to the adaptation. I genuinely was hooked every single week. Every episode I loved. There is not one episode that I feel like was weaker than the rest. And just knowing the story for so long and loving the characters for so long, just seeing them being brought back to life in such, like, a refreshing way, which is perfect and it is genuinely like my favorite thing to have ever come out of TV ever. I love it so. Wow, much. high praise! Yeah, it, high yeah, praise! It is phenomenal. <laughs> it is, and that's like it's coming off of House of the Dragon, like for HBO wise, which I really liked, and I, I in a lot of ways I think it's better than Game of Thrones. But then Last of Us has come along and it's done it perfect. I mean, f- you know, everyone makes a joke that video games haven't really had the best adaptations, and like. I, I will be a, a staunch defender of the Sonic movies. I don't I think there's a lot of us out there, but I think both Sonic films oh, are fantastic. Yeah, no. Two in particular yeah. is just like I am not so ashamed to say that I cried when when I saw Super Sonic. I felt like like all my nerd dreams have been fulfilled. <laughs> I loved it. Um, and I also remember just as a side note, the Shadow end credits cut scene. I started hyperventilating because I really wanted to see Shadow. My mum was sat next to me and she understood it as well. And there were like three kids that must have been about 10 years old that all turned around and looked at me having a panic attack about Shadow as if to go, what is he doing? And I make no apologies for it. But that's like, that's it. That's like the only thing I can think of that's like a good video game adaptation. Everything else is like middling to bad, unless I'm forgetting anything. So like, it's they didn't have a high bar to beat, and yet they soared past oh, it. Yeah. I feel like oh definitely, it's it's just a phenomenal piece of TV, and I think that they obviously had a bit of an advantage because Last of Us is such a cinematic game anyway. Both games are, yeah. Um, but and actually, the interesting thing is, I mentioned I should have said that I I knew what was happening in both games before I played them. So we literally have three different people here. Someone who played it blind, someone who hasn't played it, and someone who played it knowing what was going to happen. So we've really got the, uh, the different perspectives here. Ooh. It's mad. Um, <laughs> but it's it's quite a cinematic game, which is why like if you're going to adapt something, that's a, the good kind of game to go for, because you can pluck a lot of the story elements out and pretty much do them word for word, which they did in a lot of the scenes, which mm. I appreciated greatly as someone who just memorises scripts on a ridiculous level. Same. So, <laughs> you know, you can just sit there mouthing along with it and just know yeah. what's going on. Crispy, what did you think, though, as a, as a blind viewer to the show? Um, I thought that, like, Ant-Man Quantumania was better, I think. Oh! <laughs> I'm so yeah, so joking. Some, some context I'm here. so uh, joking. Layla. <laughs> Quantumania was your favourite Marvel film ever, was it not? I'm not having this conversation right now. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, okay, we we can agree Jonathan Majors, though. Okay, oh, we can agree yeah. on Jonathan Majors. Yeah. Yes, there we go. Okay, take that. Take Smash. that. Yeah. Take that. All right. Um, yeah, there we but go. I very much enjoyed the episodic nature of The Last of Us. I will very much say that because in this day and age of streaming and binge watching, there wasn't really much event television, don't you reckon? I mean, apart from yeah. us watching like Doctor Who, but you mean like when the world is talking about a show, you know, but this, mm. this, I very much enjoyed it. I thought that the visuals are insane. The one thing I very much remembered from watching a gameplay was the scene in episode one in the car when mayhem is just happening around them. And I still think today that is one of the best scenes I've ever seen on TV, hands down. Oh, yeah. That was Mm -hmm. stunning. And as, you know, uh, an amateur filmmaker, someone aspiring to, you know, be in film and stuff, I was watching that in absolute awe. But I mean... I I love the show. Week to week, it was something to look forward to, and I don't think I was let down by any episode at all. I enjoyed the twists and turns, and I enjoyed everyone on Twitter each week saying, oh, just you wait till next week, because it gets more messed up. <laughs> um, yeah. 
<laughs> I, I I don't know. I had a like honestly had such a fun time with this show, and so I'm glad. I'm very much glad they did it. But that's my two cents. Yeah. It was so good as well. Just like seeing the, the like the trajectory of oh, Last of Us is getting an adaptation. Oh God, video game ad- adaptation. That's not going to go well. To Pedro and Bella have been casted, and everyone trying to rail them for how they looked and how different. I mean, the fact that people criticized Pedro purely because he couldn't get a thick enough beard to match oh. Joel in the game, like that's. That's not basement dweller level. That's like that's three levels underground. I don't know where that came from, but going to that and then as soon as the first episode came out, seeing everyone go nuts about how well I'd recreated that opening section. Yeah. Like, it was like any fears people had had already had just been allayed immediately and that was it. Like everyone's guard was let down and rightfully so, because I don't as you said, I don't think there was anything in particular that they really, you know, did wrong. There was some bits that obviously they adapted and changed around, episode three in particular, but mm. I think, like, translating game to show, I think they did it pretty well. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, I think I think the next question, next next thing to focus on, uh, speaking of Pedro and Bella, is what we think of their performances. So, obviously, this is difficult for Crispy to answer, so he kind of gets the, the outsider's perspective here, I suppose. But not in a critical way, but I just want to kind of see and get your take as well, Layla, especially as such a big Pedro fan. Um, but, like... How do you feel the the performances of Pedro and Bella compare and differ to that of Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson in the game? Like, how do you feel like they offer similar or different perspectives to Joel and Ellie? I, as soon as Bella got cast, I saw all the hate. Everyone saw the hate. I was like, Mm. leave this whole person alone, please. And then you see Bella in the show as Ellie and you're just like, they are Ellie. I, there's no other way to put it. Like Troy has said it, Ashley Absolutely. has said it, Craig said it, Neil said it. She is Ellie. Like there's no arguing that. And especially in like the last episode, you see Ashley Johnson come back, and just seeing her, oh. and then it cutting to Bella as Ellie. That is, they look similar. They look like they could be related. Like it's insane. My mom said the exact same thing. So yeah, and that was embarrassing mom. as well because I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm so good at noticing like voices and voice actors. Literally before the yeah. screen came on, it was black and it was just her grunting. I was like, "That's Ashley." Yeah. I knew her voice. It's so wild. But then when I explained to my mum while she was giving birth, I went, "She played Ellie in the game." She went, she actually kind of looks like Bella. I was like, you're not wrong. She does. This is the exact conversation I had with my mum. And she was like, yeah, I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, shocked. Yeah, you I'm, can. I'm shocked. I had no idea that that was the original voice actor of Ellie. I, get, I forget you won't know these oh, things. Wow. This, is, this is amazing. Wow. That's, oh, that's so much God. fun. But yeah, I was thinking, oh, wow, they've casted this mum. Well, they look very similar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. yeah, they did. That was, that was the whole point. But that's the poetry of it, right? Is that, you know, the, the person who played Ellie in the games gives birth to the person playing Ellie in the show, basically. Yeah, well. yeah. Pretty much. Which is, like, a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. But as for Joel, I don't know about you, but I, I really like the emotional side to Joel in this. Because there are a few changes, you know. He, he, like, him handing about, um, Ellie over to Tommy in episode six, in the game it's more just very much like a, I don't want to get close to her, but he doesn't want to say that. He's just like, you can do it. You you know the area better, blah, 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 blah. There's no moment where he's like, you know, I'm I'm too deaf and too slow. I can't keep her safe. I don't trust myself. And also in episode nine, there's nothing about him killing himself. That section is completely different. Oh, wow. Ellie gives him a picture of him with Sarah and he kind of lets his guard down a bit there. So Joel is kind of like, he's still a bit of a bit of a machine, a bit of like a, a killing machine when he wants to be. Yeah. A bit John Wicky and almost even in episode nine. But the emotional side, I think is quite new to the show. And I, I really love how Pedro did that. Mm. Definitely. Pedro as Joel, honestly, one of the best castings ever. Like, yeah, I can't even fantastic. put it into words. Like, watching him every week as Joel, loving Joel for so long, loving Pedro for so long, seeing these two things collide, and him bringing Joel to life yeah. in such a new, refreshing way that Troy did. Troy is an insane Joel. Like, Troy... Uh, yes, Thanks. Troy. Love you, Troy. Yeah. <laughs> you Thank and, you, you too. Uh. And Troy Vega. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but just, Meeting him was wild. Cause cause I just told him my name and he just he signed it to Troy Vega put cool name. Cool name. <laughs> I was just like, this it was such a bizarre conversation. I love that. I love that. But oh, yeah, he's honestly. great Joel, but Pedro just knocked out of the park and his emotional side. 
I've seen him. I've seen Pedro in everything that he's in. This is the most mm. emotion we've seen him bring to a project ever. And when he was in mm. that hut with Tommy in episode six, and he was telling him, you know, about everything, and he was crying. I was crying with him. I was like, "You should not be this sad." Like it breaks my heart to see him like that. And <laughs> he just did such a great yeah. job. And just like the contrast from that, like him being so upset. To him just ripping through this hospital, killing everyone in sight, like the anger that just drives through him. I'm just like, yes, that is my man, and you are doing the best job, <laughs> and that is the best casting I've seen in a long time. It's like that, it's like a male version of that meme where it's like, I believe in women's rights, but I also believe in women's wrongs. I love yes. when women do bad things. Yes. It's like that, but just Pedro and instead. Like, yes, Which he actually... killed people, but he looked good doing it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, which, speaking of, Oscar, did you see that coming at all? Him killing everyone in the hospital? Like, what did you expect was going to happen there? Oh, I, they kind of like, um, like trickled the idea of just how brutal, um, like Pedro was throughout the, the series. We don't really see it in full force until episode nine. So, but I mean, look, I, I, I loved it. I love a bit of love a bit of action, love a bit of emotion behind the action. <laughs> love a bit of a massacre. Love a bit, love a bit of a massacre, <laughs> me. Um, but no, no, they, yeah, they, they hinted that you know he, it, you know, killed a, a lot of people back in the day, and so you know to do anything to protect Ellie, I think I, I, it wasn't that out of left field for me at all. Mm. Mm. No. And that was the the rough thing for me was I realised because I'd just done a cosplay of Ellie from part two at London Comic Con. I was like, my mum knows that Ellie is in part two. I need to throw off the scent. So as soon as they were like, <laughs> oh, you know, we're going to, we're going to, Ellie's got to die. I was literally, I just started pretending going, oh, this is, and she went, is this different? I went, I'm not saying anything. She's like, oh God. So like I tried to drop her guard so she wouldn't know because I realised I had a thought, oh God, she knows she's going to make it through this otherwise. So that was, that was a bit of a challenge. Yeah. But that's been a challenge right the way through, like trying to be quiet about things that aren't, like, like that could be big moments. Like there's one moment in episode six, you'll find out through this, but it's not a huge spoiler. There's a character that appears in the second game called Dina. We're not going to say who she is, what part she plays, whether it's big or small, but in episode six, when Ellie's sat at the dinner table and she shouts, what? And there's a girl that's kind of hiding behind a plank and she walks off. That girl, Crispy, is almost identical to Dina in the game. Oh. So, like, there's moments like that where I'm sat there going, huh, but I'm also like, got to be quiet. Like, it's, <laughs> it was such a battle and it was so, it's so much fun just trying to, like, battle those emotions, honestly. But it's just such, I, yeah, I, I love the difference. Like, they feel very much like their characters, but they also had like interesting edges to them, and I just think that both of them did a fantastic job. Brilliant! brilliant. And everyone's saying that Bella, oh, is Bella going to get recast for series two? No. no. For one thing, they're literally Ellie's age in part two yeah. now. So what is the problem? <laughs> I was about to say, I don't. They, they aged her down, didn't they? For for this? Yeah, yeah. exactly. So uh, exactly, it's it's dumb. Hmm. It's dumb. But uh, perhaps a more relevant question, and this is one I'm really interested to get both of your takes on. Again, for the the play, not play perspective. The one criticism I've seen the most for the show, and it's one I kind of feel, is that there wasn't enough infected. We had the big section in the museum in episode two, and the huge set piece with the bloater in episode five. But beyond that, there's only a couple of bits of infected in different places. Do you guys feel there wasn't enough, or do you feel like we got the right amount compared with everything else in the show? You go first, Layla. I feel like if there was more, people would complain that it was repetitive. If because you know yeah. people like to complain there's nothing you can complain about in the show so people are just nitpicking i feel like because they need something to complain about but i feel like when there was infected it was just perfect and like i think it's in like the start of episode three where you see the infected in like the trapped in the rocks and ellie goes up to it and she like slices its head or whatever it's not attacking her but yeah. that moment is means so much more after episode seven, after you see the scene with Riley. She has beef with the infected, right? Everyone does. She needed to do that. And that hits so much harder. And they were just placed perfectly. Obviously the action with the bloater in episode five, six, which five, um, was great for the moment. And, you know, that big swarm and like the swarm in episode two. But uh, you know, where else do you want them? This is a t- this is a TV show. It's not the video game. It's a, it's t- they're telling a story. They're not you're not playing the game while you're doing it. I feel like it was like the perfect amount. And like I said, if there was more, people would be complaining. 
it was repetitive. Like you can't exactly. win. I feel like, but I I didn't mind it. You know, yeah. I prefer having like a emotional story with these characters you can connect to. You can't connect to a clicker. You know, who's going to be sympathizing <laughs> with these people who are eating people? Nobody. You know, she I, makes a good I point. thought it was she fine. Makes a good point. I, I didn't mind it at all. I really liked it. That's funny. What do you think, Chris? I just like the phrase, you can't connect with a clicker. I'll get that on a t shirt. That's <laughs> yeah, funny. I love that. I really like that, yeah. Get that on a t shirt. We'll send you a free clicker? sample. Um, that's, that's a really interesting point that you asked this because I remember when the clicker rocked up in the last episode, I was watching with my girlfriend. I'm like, oh, we haven't seen one of these for a while. Um, but it wasn't like, I mean, I think one of the best set pieces in the show was that massive what are they called a bloater what do you call them yeah yeah the bloater yeah, i i loved i loved love loved that absolutely but i mean like yeah as you say the clickers are not necessarily the main focus of the show the the core of the show is um ellie and joel you know if you have an episode without them which episode three was then they even managed to do that well so i think they couldn't really do any wrong this series um but mm. in regards to i mean Sure, I could have I could have had some more, but it didn't lessen the the value of the show to me at all. So, as a, as a casual viewer, not knowing how many there's supposed to be, I was like, yeah, fine. The, I mean, use them sparingly. It's kind of like you never know when they're gonna rock up. Yeah, they're around the corner. I, I think the only the, the only scene where they didn't use them they could have done that I've seen fair criticism for is episode eight mm-hmm. because obviously you won't know this, but. The stuff between Ellie and David while she's waiting for James to come back with the medicine. The, in the game, a whole bunch of infected attack them and they fend them off together and it kind of allows Ellie to let her guard down a little bit more and trust David a little bit more. Still wary, but like they have that kind of bonding bit. Right. But they took that section out. Now, I've listened to the podcast with um, Craig Mazin, the showrunner with Neil Druckmann, talking about why they did that. And they kind of made the argument that, you know, if they do find infected out in the middle of nowhere, what's to say they couldn't just rock up randomly later? If you don't have them show up, then it kind of removes them as a threat and you can focus on David. And I'm like, that's fair. That yeah. makes sense. But that's the only one where I noticed and went, you could have had some there, but I get why you didn't. But also, Bloater, can I just say, love they didn't kill the Bloater. I really like that. Yeah. Because that that sets a precedent that you can't kill them going forward or they're very difficult to kill. Because in a game, killing them is a blooming nightmare, let alone in the show. Oh my I God. saw Tommy's voice had to get his head ripped off. Like, I just... <laughs> He's braver than I would have been. I would have been like, you know, you run and then shot a bit and then gone, nah, I'm running too. Yeah, I wouldn't go, have tanked that. There's no way. Yeah, that's not happening. It's not happening. Um, but yeah, we've still got at least two more seasons of the show because the one thing they've said is part two is a much bigger game. As Like we said, we're not going to spoil it, but part two, it makes the length of part one look like nothing. It's huge, okay. the second game. And mm. the showrunners have confirmed that they're playing coy as to how many, but they've said that there will be at least more than one season on part two. So there's plenty more time to look at infected. And they've said that themselves, they'll be more infected there. So where it fits, they'll use them. And I feel like in this series, we got a good amount. Maybe could we have had a bit more? Sure. Am I sad we didn't? Not not really. I, I don't know. I don't feel like I don't feel like it. Fair enough. That's fair enough, Troy. Yeah. That's fair enough, Troy. There you go. There you go. And that's my, that's my TED talk. Well, um, so... <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one I think is good. Um, and I, like this, 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 every question I feel like is interesting for the perspective. I don't know why I keep saying that. What is everybody's favorite episode from the show? If we have one, because I'm not even sure I can answer this easily. Number three. Oh, immediately number jumping three. in with number three. Yeah, Bye. I love that. Oh, Layla, what do you think? Uh, I'm some for some reason just emotionally attached to episode six. I just love Gabriel Luna so much and seeing him reunite yeah. with Joel and having Ellie finding out about Sarah and seeing Maria and just them having like some peace for once. Like they're in this hmm. town and nothing's bothering them. Just seeing them relax for once is just so nice. And yeah, I don't know why it's a bit of a, a bit of an odd one, but I just love that one the most and episode eight as well. Oh, and the problem is I can't answer it. I find it tough. Boy. I find it tough. So while I'm thinking, Crispy, what was your stance in episode three? What, what was the reasoning of that for well, you? Well, here's the thing. I, I'd i only seen... Uh, I'd never seen Bella Ramsey before at all. Mm. Um, I knew of Pedro Pascal from Mandalorian and Wonder Woman and such. Um, but I'd never, <laughs> never seen him 
uh, in a role as good as this, and I completely agree with Layla that this is hands down the best role I've ever seen him in. Um, mm. But one thing I absolutely am a stan of is Nick Offerman, the yeah. one of one of the actors because I love I love Parks and Rec. I think they're an incredible actor and a very like good comedic actor. But this is probably the first time I've seen Nick do a serious role and the episode just took me completely by surprise because it's not even like a mid-series like tangent like it's episode three and we're getting this nice little side quest and i'm like oh all right and man i cried like it was just it was like not a dry eye in the house i was like this is this could be like a you know an oscar short film winner right here like this is this is some really good storytelling um and yeah, I, I I just think that episode is so beautiful and so self-contained. Um, and yeah, I think it's like the sh- the short film of the series, and I I loved it. I loved it. But yeah, that's just me. Well said. Thank you. I'm kind of drawn to the last episode. Oh. I, I I have a similar feeling with Layla about episode six. I really like six for like what it sets up, especially with Tommy and just getting to see Jackson more Maria. That I really like that episode, but. I think nine, I'm still riding off the high of it and I'm going to go and watch it again after this. I'm not going to lie to you, but I think the way that it kind of did everything bit by bit like with the giraffe, which by the way, in case there's any doubt, was a real giraffe was there. That wasn't yeah. CGI. Really? Which is mm. astounding. Yeah, it was blue screen around them, but the giraffe was there. I thought that I was like, damn, they've done a really good job on like the tongue graphic. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was, it was there. Um, but also, I just think I, I was wondering in my head how they were going to handle Joel killing everyone in the hospital because like that's a, that's like a 10, 15, 20 minute gameplay segment yeah. in the in the game. It's like how are you going to translate that well? Instead, you just got this orchestral version of the theme playing while he's walking around. Like it was so well filmed and planned and everything. It was just like that was beautiful, and I love that they did the exact same editing for the ending. Where you know she gives him the choice, saying you know we can still do the right thing, and it cuts the car, then jumps back, and he sh- like that is literally bit for bit how it happens in the game. Oh, cool. And I was so chuffed they just kept that the same. Yep. Like it's kind of like you know if it ain't broke, don't fix yeah. it. So I'm kind of pushed towards saying that was my fave because I just think it it ended very strongly. Oh, good. I don't know. Very very. Can I? So three, six, and nine. We're, we're evenly yeah, split here. I love it. Let's go. Um, can I ask like what were the major? Um, detours from the game that the series took can i ask what like the main differences oh. were just i uh, curious because i had no idea i think the i think the bill and frank was the biggest segue we never yeah. saw them together like that and just kind of exploring them more and we see frank we don't see him die but we see him dead in the game but yeah bill doesn't die he's still there when joel and ellie go to find him and he doesn't die we don't see him die at all but seeing him go with frank <laughs> no i need neil to apologize i am just traumatized <laughs> from the episode it's like one of the saddest oh, yeah. things i've ever watched in my entire life mm. like make me fall in love with these characters i knew what was coming for frank but when i saw bill downing that wine i was like you little i know what you're doing and i can't believe you've just done that <laughs> yeah. to me like it was horrible as soon as he came it's in rough. yeah with the bottle yeah. i was like what are the odds that he's already put them in the bottle yep. i was like what are the odds yep so no it was it was phenomenal but that does lead on to a, to a good point i was going to make and it, it mainly focuses on episode nine because there's two big things in episode nine they do change a few details um here and there but the, the two big ones in episode nine the first one is giving an explanation for ellie's immunity we don't get that in the game. Oh, we have no wow. reason to believe any way why Ellie is immune. That is crazy. Instead, we find out that it's potentially because obviously her mum gets bit while giving birth. Maybe a little bit got into the brain and it's kind of the cordyceps assume she's infected when she's not. So when she gets bit, nothing happens. And also, we never know what happens to Riley. So what happened with that? The, the left behind bit, I don't know if you already know this, was a DLC that was released after the main game. So we don't see the Ellie and Riley stuff until after the main games come out. So all we hear in the game is that Ellie mentions that Riley was there. She got bit. They both didn't know what to do. Riley died. We don't know anything about it beyond that. Oh. We then obviously see it happen in the DLC. and But again, we don't know what happens to Riley. But I did think in episode four, was it when, you know, Ellie said, you know, she killed someone, but then didn't allude to it. I was like, uh. could that have been, are we going to go there? Could it be Riley? Mm. And I was like, maybe. But yeah, so we don't. So those two are both big new bits of information. 
And you're going to get the diehard, like, the purists who are going to say, we didn't need to know why he was immune, and I can get it. But I actually kind of like the way they did it, because it ties in, like, it's, like, a bit meta with Ashley Johnson there and all that. Yeah. I kind of like both both editions. I don't know how you feel, Layla, but I think both of them are quite cool. Yeah, 100%. Obviously, we kind of had to assume what happened with Riley, even after episode 7. We didn't see Ellie kill her, but, mm-hmm. you know... Ah, it's such a... Oh, I hate it so much. And I'm, I was terrified that they were going to show it. I really thought, yeah. as the episode yeah. was going on, I was like... I hate this so much. We're going to see Ellie kill Riley and it's going to ruin me. I'm never going to want to watch anything ever again. <laughs> so glad they didn't. But I like that they kind of left us on edge assuming that that's what happened, but then confirming it in episode nine just made it even more heartbreaking. And I'm so scared to go back and watch episode seven now, knowing this, that like they've confirmed oh, yeah. that. And also, I think the explaining Ellie's immunity was really a good thing to have in the show because obviously people who haven't played the game might not, have the same like assumption like or whatever i don't know but no that that's that's a really really good point because like i i like just as a casual fan watching the show that was one thing that i was like oh they'll probably explain that in the in the finale and i was very happy Mm. with the explanation right away um but i had no idea that that they never like address it i mean Mm. damn i'm pretty impressed Um, i'm pretty impressed i just realized as well yeah the best bit is one of the biggest arguments defending Joel killing everyone and saving Ellie was that the Fireflies might have been clueless because can you really cure a fungal infection? I mean, they make a big effort in the first two episodes in the cold opens to say, you know, cordyceps, it can't, there's no vaccine, we can't do anything about it. So the theory in the game that they can do something about it is shaky at best. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like that was almost a thing to back Joel killing Ellie because it's like, uh, not killing Ellie, killing everyone <laughs> on to save Ellie because you go... Could it have worked anyway? They just killed her for nothing. But now they give an actual answer. Yeah. And you can see there's a real weight to his choice that, no, he probably has just robbed the world of a cure and it makes it have more... There's much more weight to that choice. And I like that that decision to do that. Definitely. Whether that was the reason or not, I don't know. But I just love that that gives it that weight. I, I really like that. I'm a fan of that. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good show, I mm. say. Yeah. Good show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was amazing. It was very, very good. Um, and also, I feel like we. I, I'm presuming you noticed Laura Bailey, uh, Layla. I did. I yeah, actually had screeners for the show. I watched all nine episodes two months ago, and I had. I to forgot keep, you did. Yeah, oh, <laughs> I had to keep quiet for two months. I when I saw her in that scene, I was like, Oh my god! I was like, How did you do action. that? I got it from my job. I got to write about it every week. I had the episode. No wonder all you got the time. special guest, Troy. My goodness, no, exactly. This is exactly. the special guest. I want you to hook me up. I, w- I want to be able to watch the second season early. If you got any jobs going, at Agents of Fandom, I could do with the money. Um, <laughs> that's, that's, name semi, that. that's semi serious. Um, <laughs> no, um, but yeah, like so. For context, again, we're not going to explain who. Yeah. There is a character in the second game called Abby, who is played by Laura Bailey, who is uh, another big voice actor, kind of same level as Troy Baker. Yeah. The two of them are like two of my favorite voice actors, like Troy Baker, Laura Bailey, and also Ashley Birch, who is also in the second game, ironically. My top three favorite voice actors. I love the, all three of them to bits. But Laura Bailey, ironically, I don't think some people know this. This is going to be a fun little fact for some of the game players. Laura Bailey was one of the nurses in that final episode that Joel tells to turn around. She's also that same nurse in the game. Because I have an uncanny ability of hearing someone's oh. voice and knowing the voice actor have heard them somewhere else. And she played one of the nurses then. They changed the voice actress for the remake because obviously she later got cast as this different character. But I just thought it was nice that not only a big character, a big voice actor from the second game got to appear in it, but in the same role she originally yeah. played in the first game. Like that that's is, all kinds that's of even metal. more meta than yeah. Ashley yeah. Johnson. It's brilliant. <laughs> it's so good. So I was a huge fan of that. Um, but I did, I spotted it in the background, didn't say anything, and my mum sent me something earlier going, you didn't spot this in the episode. I went, no, I did. I just didn't say anything. <laughs> cheeky, cheeky, cheeky. <laughs> gotta, gotta keep quiet. Gotta keep quiet. Wow, wow, you have wow. To. You haven't got a choice. No, you haven't got a choice. No, absolutely not. But speaking of the second game and what comes next, and this is, this is going to be the most interesting one, because I feel like the, the first person to ask for this is going to be you, Crispy. Okay. Because then we can kind of add our thoughts on and be careful by Layla yeah. Bond. Crispy, we know there's going to be a second season, probably more, because part two of the game is going to be split into several, as we've said. What would you hope for and or expect to see 
in season two as someone who has absolutely, and you can confirm this again, you know nothing, okay. as someone who knows zilch about what's coming next? Um, I would like to see Ellie get some kind of, like, tattoo on her arm, if that was to happen. Okay, all right, without being spoiled <laughs> by my cos- cos- Comic-Con outfit, yeah. like, without that. Um, I, I've got no idea what happens in The Last of Us Part 2. Um, so I will say, I could, well, this is the thing because now we know that Joel were, doesn't want to give Ellie up for a cure or whatever. I'm assuming there's a time jump, definitely. Um, so I, I don't know what the trajectory, like what the journey is because, you know, the, the entire series was trying to get Ellie to this place and they're like, oh, wait, let's get her out. Um, so I don't, I have no idea. Well, they'll have to, there's obviously some kind of mission that has to happen. They have to go somewhere, do something, and face all kinds of threats. But I have no idea what that would look like. It, I, I don't know. I don't know. But I just hope it's fun and it's nine episodes again and we have a good time. That's all I care Very about. Very diplomatic of mm. you. Well, it could be ten. Did you, did you know that about the first, yeah, they, the first they episode? Chucked the, them the together. Series- that's probably yeah. my one my one episodes. criticism yeah. is yeah. because I thought the pa- I thought the pacing was a bit off in episode one because I was like we had all this jam packed stuff which I realise is now the first uh, episode and then we I was like oh we're still going we're still going uh, but now I realise that they've jammed two episodes together so instead of a story looking like this it looked like a camel with two um, but anyway it was it it was fun it was fun. So, season two, mm-hmm. no idea, but I just want it to be bloody good, and I hope they get paid. Lots of money, Pedro. Yes. And what's her name? Well, Bella they, Ramsey. They no doubt will. Yeah. I just hope it's soon. That's my first thing. I want it to be I soon. I don't want so. it to be two years away. You know, we we, we grew up with, with yearly Doctor Who. We don't get that for any show. Like, we don't get it for Doctor Who anymore, to be nah. fair, but we don't get it for any show. Like, you know, House of the Dragon ended, it was like, oh, it won't be, it'll be at least two years. So that comes back and, and Pedro's like, we might start filming season two by the end of the year. It's like, start filming it? Filming, oh, God. Yeah. Oh, no. So we're going to have such a wait and it's going to it's gonna hurt. It's going to hurt. A lot of people are going to play part two in the meantime and have an idea of what's coming because like, there's mm. a lot. I think it's been like the biggest selling game on PlayStation for like the last two months now no because of the show. Which is just mental to think. Like everyone's jumping ahead like, I want to see what comes next. You got you to gotta, you gotta tell me what's coming. Um, so Layla, what are your hopes? And again, we, we've both got to be so careful. With this, I swear. I down. What are your hopes? What I can, you I can see take in my headphones two? off. I can leave the room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you could. So uh, we mentioned earlier. No. So what? What are you hoping for? Oh, I'm so scared. <laughs> I don't like, care. I, I don't... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say. Like, I don't know if this is classed as a spoiler, but um okay i don't know how to word this but there's a very specific part of the game that we see kind of later on that i want them to put first and i want them to do that first this is not gonna sound great for people who don't know the story but i know in my brain what i mean and then i want the big thing to happen at the end of the next season and then the second or third season to go off of the big thing that's all I can say without anything away. But I'm scared. All right. Okay. Yeah. So Ellie getting married. Um, no. <laughs> so <laughs> got 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 to throw a blinder out there. You know, uh, Chris. We said you thought there'd be a time jump. You know, maybe there's enough of a time jump. You don't know. You don't know. Don't know. Um, I like that. Yeah. Because. Yeah, you got to be careful because of the way part two is done and its structure and stuff. Yeah. You, you could possibly jig some things around. And it would be interesting to see whether they keep... Because the they, one thing they've said is, you know, some things will stay the same, some might be improved a little bit, some might be changed drastically like episode three, but it will always be in the service of making it better than it already was, if not the same. Yeah. So I'm interested to see what they do there. Um, there's a few scenes that I really like, um, like much like the first game, like the scene I was looking forward to seeing the most in this, I don't know about you, but was the it was the you have no idea what loss is. Yeah. That is my favourite scene in both games. I have watched that scene 50 million times. Do you think maybe the game did it slightly better? I can't lie to you. I don't know how you feel on that. Yeah, I agree. I don't know. Yeah, like Pedro does it amazingly. And I love that I found that he he was the one who said about the... There's a line in the game, Chris, where when Ellie mentioned Sarah, he goes, you're walking on mighty thin ice here. Like he's quite threatening about it to begin with. 
Mm, but apparently Pedro saw that line and said to them, I don't think it would sound right coming out of my mouth, me saying that. And to be honest, I can kind of get that. Yeah. I don't know whether it would quite, maybe. Uh, so that was the thing that kind of clinched it for me. But I do, there's one scene, I will, I'll, I'll just say it. One of the very last scenes, I think you know which one I'm talking about. There's a scene right near the very end that I, I just cannot wait to see Pedro and Bella do. Oh, I'm going to say that yep. and leave that there. Mm-hmm. There is a scene and I want, I like those two, it will make me cry. I know it will. Mm-hmm. I know it will. There's a scene. There's a wow. scene. That sounds like something bad. Ha- I'm just saying it's a, it's a, it's a conversation. I'm not, it's not yeah. a big spoiler. There's a conversation, but it's a particularly impactful one. And if they do it right, it will make Troy- me cry. That's Troy, all I'm going to say. I asked for no spoilers, and now I know there's going to be a conversation. Great. Thanks, <laughs> I know. Troy. I'm so sorry. How dare you? I'm so gosh. sorry. I'm so sorry. My goodness. Yeah. That is very rude. Appalling. That I'm is very so rude. See, in my head, my, my target audience right now is my mom. Because I'm like, what would I think she'd be all right with knowing? <laughs> That's how I'm controlling See, it. See, I showed my mom the entire gameplay of part two. We sat and watched a YouTube video of all the cutscenes. I was like, you need to know what happens next because you're going to be bothering me for the next however long and you're going to be yeah. complaining that you're not going to know what happens next. So I'm just going to show you it. And she was in tears. <laughs> oh, no, I'm the opposite. I've not shown her a bit of that. Like, every time we lo- we've looked up loads of comparisons between this, the show and the game, yeah. and I'm like, just look away in case something shows up from part two. She's like, okay. Because all it takes for one video to show up, it was like, I got No Way Home spoiled for me on my YouTube yeah. recommended before the film came out. Oh. And it was a, a picture with Toby in the thumbnail. And I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, it's so easy for that to happen. So I'm like, no, we've got to be careful here. Mm. But you, two years, a, like, it's going to be tough. a long time. Worth mm. the wait, though, yeah, I reckon. it's a long time. I reckon oh, 100%. it will be. It will be. Mm. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. Um, and it'll be interesting to see what people think of it. Because one thing we cannot as well say, and so this moment as well already, is the second game was far more divisive among fans. I've heard that. There is a quite a, there's quite a big sect of Last of Us players that despise what Part 2 and what it does. So I'm interested to see if, first off, those people will like it more seeing it in the show. And second off, how many people new to the show, a la you, are going to respond in the same or different ways to it. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be very, very interesting. We'll, we'll still be here mm, about be. 100 episodes into the <laughs> podcast, but we'll still be here. <laughs> yeah, 100, more like 150, 150 at this yeah, rate, maybe. probably. It's two years off, yeah. Whew, gee whiz. But uh, I think that's probably a good point to wrap up. Is there anything else we should uh, talk about? I think that's a good point to to wrap. You know, all, all in all, be. good show. Good, good show. show. Good. I, me like. Me, me like, like Pedro. Good, good job. Good TV. We, we love Pedro. Pedro. Watch The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. <laughs> yes. Because that film was amazing. Yes. I, I, that, is, that, that film was so... I never thought I'd, I'd be laughing at Pedro Pascal crying about Paddington 2. It's not a phrase I thought I'd say in my life. But that is just... <laughs> I cried right the way through it. It made me want to become a better man. I was like... Damn. And I remember hearing the memes. It's like, you know, it's the, it was the highest rated film on IMDb. I need to watch Paddington 2. It's really good, actually. I agree with him. <laughs> All right, okay, I'm going to make it a priority to watch it. There you go, that's our conclusion for this week's episode. <laughs> and ne- next week's special episode will be the Padding- Paddington 1 and yes. 2. Uh, so yeah. get excited. Make up for the last of- lack of a Wednesday episode, because we were going to do it on Wednesday and it just took me too long. That's another point, actually, is that I love that it was weekly, because I-, I find it so hard to watch a series that drops at once. Yeah. yeah. Like, I've only just finished Wednesday, like, a couple of days ago lately, because I didn't have, like, the, so for some reason, the idea of a big series, just finding the time for it was just not, mm. I just couldn't find it. But knowing there's a weekly show where I have to watch it once a week, a la The Mandalorian now as well, it's mm. like, it's great. Well, I, think, I think that... Also, yeah, rest in peace, uh, last last week of Double Pedro. Oh, just last, that week. In there, last week of Double Pedro. God bless. Yeah. Um, but I, I think yeah. that kind of very much worked in The Last of Us favor because such since it was such like event television you know there was mm-hmm. it's just every week for nine weeks someone was talking oh did you see the see the last one and we're at the point where it's season one where people are like oh i can catch up i can catch up before the finale and so i i i just think they did a very very good job with the distribution of it um I agree. So yeah, but if if Wednesday, I don't. But I think because Wednesday, such it wasn't like. I mean, it is an established property, the Adams family and all that. But no one knew if this was mm. going to be a hit or not. So I think them all dropping it at once, be like, you got to you got to watch that worked in its favor. But it'll be interesting to see if Wednesday goes episodic after this. But anyway, that's that's just my two cents mm. on the TV landscape. They might do it like because Netflix have been doing more of a splitting in two parts. So you never know. Mm. True. Yeah. True, never that. Know. True that. True mm. that. But anyway, before we veer off topic completely, uh, that's a good point for us to uh, to wrap up. See, we got to stay. We got we had to stay mm. focused. You know, you got to get to work. It's I crazy. I'm going to go and kick my feet up now. 
and watch the oh, episode again and you're off to I work. I very much am going to kick my feet up, but it's at work, unfortunately. I know. Imagine having a job, am I right, Layla? It's crazy. You know, no. you know we don't have them. Definitely not. No, boring, boring. Um, but seriously, Layla, thank you thank so much you. for coming on. Like I said, it's, it's quite big for us like to have a, a non-Doctor Who related person talk about something that isn't Doctor Who. Like it's a big this moment, is a moment for, us. for the podcast. And I really appreciate you coming Yay. on. Like I followed you for like years now, so it's very <laughs> cool to like have that interaction. So I really appreciate you being here. Yeah, thank you for having me. This was so fun. Any chance I get to scream about Pedro Pascal, I will take. <laughs> this was very fun. That was why I, s- I literally said that to Chris. I was like, I feel like as long as, long as we just lure in and say there's going to be some Pedro oh, yeah. chat, she might be yeah. up for it. I will so, that. And you, let, you almost literally <laughs> bit my hand off. Yeah, it was great. It was brilla- <laughs> So, wait, wait, where? Here's your chance to scream. Oh, yeah, I was about to say, oh. no, you go. I was going to say, where can the, where I was can say, the people yeah, find you? Scream at the audience. Where can people find you? I am on all socials at Falcons Now. I've been reviewing The Last of Us every week. I'm so sad that it's over, but I will still have Mandalorian and The Last of Us content coming out every week. And you can find me as one of three hosts on the Fandom Academy podcast for Agents of Fandom. We are on all platforms, anywhere you find your podcasts, where we will be covering The Mandalorian every week from now on. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for having me. This was very fun. No worries. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a blast. It's been Absolutely really really good. Amazing. And hey, if you need anyone to 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 feature on yours, you know, our doors are open as well. You know, <laughs> yeah, we have a very good event. at the, the last minute push. <laughs> um, hey, look, look. If you don't, you miss a hundred percent of the shots. You don't exactly. take. Exactly. Okay? Exactly. There you go. There you go. Um, you miss a hundred percent of the cordyceps. You don't. Kiss? I don't know. What would you say? That, that test scene, man. We never oh, even mentioned no. that. Yeah, that, that was, that was, that was, that was a bit grim. That was rough. Yeah, it was, it was tough getting your lips around that. Anyway, so thank you all very much for watching, and we'll be back on Saturday with another Main Doctor episode. What are we even doing on Saturday, Chris? We I forgot. We're doing the wildest Doctor Who theories. That's it. Yeah, there you go. It's so wild, I forgot about it. But we'll see you on Saturday for that. Until then, thank you all very much for listening. Thank you again, Layla, for joining us. And we'll see you all in just a few days' time. See you all soon. Alonzi? <laughs> Baby, bye. Alonzi, yes, Alonzi. Well, I was like, can you say Alonzi in, 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 in it's the last of us episode? What do episode. they say? Layla won't even get it. Oh, so, uh, oh wait, no, yeah, David's her favourite doctor. Uh, she will get you're, it. You're on, yeah. you're, uh, you're on uh, Series 10, Episode 3, Thin Ice, baby. That's what it is. Mighty Thin Ice. Mighty Thin Ice. Thin ice. There you go. <laughs> There you go. Nice crossing. Yeah. All right, let's cut it off there. Bye. Bye.